The field. Every neighborhood has one. Grass, concrete, or dirt. The stage is the same. The rules, unwavering. And the goals, beautiful. It goes in! Improbable scenes! It's where the dream begins to achieve the ultimate victory. The underdogs have prevailed once again! One cup, open to all. There is a celebration in Orlando. Now, America's oldest soccer tournament is back. The field doesn't care if you're a pro or trying to be one. It only asks, how bad do you want it? It's unbelievable! The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. The second round of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup has arrived as Orange County SC takes on Capo FC from Championship Soccer Stadium in Irvine, California. Welcome in, Josh Toll and Jose Rodriguez with you today. And Jose, you look at this Capo FC team looking to upset Orange County SC here tonight. These two separated by about 19 miles just down the five is Capo FC making their way up north to take on Orange County SC. As we take a look at Orange County looking for their first win here in 2023. Well, it's a great opportunity for Orange County, Josh, just because, you know, they need to get back on track. They need to get uh, at least one win. It's early in the season. And it's a great opportunity here at the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. A lot on the line as well as just one match. You have a bad night, you might go home. And then you look on the other side for Capo FC, a big win in the first round. Now they're looking to build off that momentum. Right, a 4-1 win that gives them a lot of confidence. And do, they do have some experience in their roster. You know, they, they competed at a good level in NISA, and it's a big, big test for them here tonight. And we'll look at our starting 11 for both these sides. And we'll begin with Orange County SC. You look at plenty of players with experience for Orange County. Yeah, 4-4-2 formation for them. Nielsen and Osundina at the top. You know, but this is not a young team at all. You know, sometimes a USA Championship team will decide to go young. It's not the case tonight for Orange County. Look out for Heavenly Mota on the other side for Capo FC. He has two goals coming off that win against Ventura County Fusion. Ventura County Fusion was the defending champions of USL League Two, and now they look to knock out the USL champions from 2021 right. in Orange County. Yep, absolutely. It will be a 4-4-2 formation for them as well. So. You know, you can look at Capo, you know, and they can be aggressive from the wings and they can be as well compact defensively, which is something that wouldn't be surprising here tonight. Orange County SC will be in the black and orange stripes with orange numbers and lettering. Meanwhile, Capo FC in the white with the blue numbers and the blue horizontal white socks. Hundred eighth edition here, the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. And we are underway from Irvine, California, as Orange County will send this ball forward. Jose, you look at this game for Capo FC. What do you need to see from a team like them going up against a veteran side like Orange County SC? Well, they need to be solid defensively. There's no doubt about it. They need to try to defend with the ball, especially early in the game, and limit exactly this. You don't need fouls that will bring set-piece opportunities, as we all know. Orange County is a very experienced team. They know exactly what they need to do, especially when they have the ball. Peterson will have a free kick here for Orange County. So a chance here to get some movement in the box, see if they can get an opening goal here early in the opening minute of play. Peterson will send it in. Not it away, but not out. And this is going to be covered up by Nathan King. King do the smart thing and smothering that ball to prevent a rebound attempt here from Orange County. This ball sent all the way down. You look at the second game here for Capo FC in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Meanwhile, for Orange County, seven wins, eight draws, eight losses, and two draws all time. To possibly get their eighth win here tonight at home. Good crowd out tonight. As this is played back, and Orange County will reset. A little pressure here from Capo FC. This ball played in the near side, and Andrew Fox, he'll bring it inside now, played to the wing. 
brought up the line by Dogman. He'll play it down. And now pushing up is Villanueva, the second year player. Villanueva tripped up, so free kick now coming for the 20 year old. And again, just a little bit over aggressive through the wings. This time is Loya. But listen, you know, it's, it's, it's important for them to go for the ball as much as possible, just to limit the opportunities inside the box for Orange County. But you need to control yourself a little bit just because, you know, giving set piece opportunities to Orange County, especially early in the match, is not something that would be ideal for them. Again, once again, was born in Norway, hails from Denmark. The service to the spot. Beautiful service there, but Orange County unable to get a foot to it. This will be headed away by Capo FC. Capo FC last year under Peter Carey. Eight wins, one draw, and one loss. Southwest Conference champions in Nisa Nation. So they have had success here these last couple years. King will send it away. Each of the struggles here of Orange County so far this season, looking for their first win. One loss, three draws on the year. In USL play, they've had three straight draws though. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for them. You know, it's it's Open Cup, it's a different competition. This brings a lot of pressure as well because you need to perform tonight, you know, there, there's no tomorrow. So um, it's, it's gonna be important for them to have a good performance in, and get the win here. Pulling away, but wanted to slip that through as it's stolen away. Gallardo will go to the end line and it's gonna be ushered out. Last touch there by Dogman of Orange County. is USL to sign. Milan Olosky leads the team in scoring on the season. Also last year with 22 goals, he's not in that starting 11. Could see him on the come off the bench though today. It's Pope Ford. Now backing up is Loya. Loya will play it out to midfield. Deflected back by Orange County. And this is the time to give opportunities to players just because you're coming off preseason and everybody's fresh, everybody's ready to go. But at the same time, in a cup competition, it's a little bit risky. Dogman. Fox in his first year with the club will play to the top of the 18. Still loose around the top. Villanueva trying to gain control, loses possession. Pushing up is now is Montez. Montez slipping one through to the wing. And you see the stumble right there by Orange County. Two on one opportunity here for Capo. See the shot deflected right into the hands of Cropper. Man, what a missed opportunity here for Capo. A great counter-attack situation, moving the ball on the left side and taking advantage of a mistake as well defensively from Orange County, but just a able to finish. His guys are in front of goal. You know, those are the opportunities, especially when you're on the road. You need to score on those situations so early on you get the chance. Man. Proper big right there with that deflection. Had four saves coming into today's game. This is a beautiful, beautiful ball. ball. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's a beautiful ball right there. The sliding tackle, it's in my opinion, a mistake that time because you know it's it's winner just gave them an opportunity in the counter attack. But unfortunately for them in the end, you know, it's it's a good save that time by Cody Cropper. Look at that too, being the visiting team, being the Team that's a tier below, that would have been a big one for Capo FC, a couple tiers below actually. Think about confidence, think about, you know, just having the, you know, that goal behind you to back you up. Uh, it means so many things, you know, especially early on. Rosentino not able to collect that ball. Look at this Capo FC side and that four to one victory. Josue Gallardo with a goal. 
Ramos with two goals, Parker Scalzo with a goal as well. Chance here. Another slip through ball, but unable to do anything was Capo FC. A couple of things right there for Orange County. They, they did a great job running back, but nobody pressured the ball. And that allowed um, the attacker to have an opportunity to push a ball through, which, you know, it should be a little bit concerning for the coaching staff because, yes, it's okay to run back, but at some point, somebody needs to step up to the ball. Still in a wave of uh, switching sides of the field. Orange County now looking to put pressure on that back line of Capo FC. The delivery in this one's going to be smothered by King. Couple runners in the box there for Orange County. Good rhythm to the game early on. Back and forth. Moving the ball from side to side. Both teams. Really, really good start here. Nielsen popped out wide. Chopped down by Orange County. Go back to that 2021 USL Championship for Orange County Soccer. Taken down Tampa Bay Rowdies by a score of three to one. Look at the best they've done though in the US Open Cup. You go back to 2017 where they made it to the fourth round before they fell to the LA Galaxy of MLS. Gallardo playing out wide. On the attack is Capo FC. Scalzo at a steep angle. Scalzo back Ooh. post. That's just beautiful from Capo. A lot of quality right there. And again, talking about moving the ball. This all starts on the left side. Scalzo, edge of the box, takes his time, opens up to the right side does everything right except for, for putting the shot in frame. Right now, Capo FC, they do not look out of place here against Orange County. Stage not looking too big for Capo FC as they have had a couple of good chances here. One good looking shot that was denied by Cropper. That was on a two on one opportunity. Especially for Scalzo, had an opportunity that maybe he would be thinking of. You know, any other striker in the world would be thinking, I missed a chance right there, but gets back to it. You know, good mentality, keeping the concentration. Still a lot of time to go here. Pulling a wave, uh, backs up. Dogman down the line, looking for Villain Wave on the reconnect. This ball played out wide. Now driven over the top, a year of chance in the channel for Orange County. The cross into the six, off the crossbar and over. Great looking chance right there for Orange County. And the key to the play here is how they are able to move past the high pressure from Kappa, which is a little bit risky. The ball goes onto the right side. It's a beautiful cross coming in, but it's not an easy finish because the pressure of the goalkeeper right in front of Osundina, and that's why he's not able to finish. So yes, it's a beautiful play in terms of the buildup for Orange County, but give a lot of credit as well for the goalkeeper because he puts his body on the line doesn't make the save, but he puts enough pressure that he doesn't allow the striker to finish. A couple of hold your breath moments now for both sides here in this opening 11 minutes. Osindine into the circle. Villanueva will pop it out. Dogmen trying to get around. The defender as they collide, and we're going to have our first booking of yep. the game. And this is going to go to Javier Loya. Yeah, and that's an easy one for the referee. Because Loya is late to the ball. You'll see it right here. It's, it's a good move because you know the defender. You, you can see him as he's trying to make the sliding tackle. You, you see he's coming for you. So you just move the ball past the defender, take the contact, and um, yeah, it's a, an easy decision for the referee. 
Hogman, the first year player for Orange County involved in that collision. So once again, a free kick here for Peterson. and sets back post well, that back post ball they want to head it right back to the middle of the six but right there Nathan King he's been active early but calling off his defenders to get to the ball and that's good for a goalkeeper you know to have a couple of saves early on to have a feeling of the ball constantly it's, it's it's something good for the goalkeeper, especially you knowing him. And again, this, the important of this match, Josh, is it's 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 win or go home. You know, it's it's hard to understand at times because it's so early in the competition. But you know, they're playing under the same pressure that the finalists will be playing on. You know, that's that's the name of the game here. You need to have a good performance. Looking at 18 games today, and we were talking about some possible upsets here today. And Already, yes, Tulsa Athletic with a 1-0 win over FC Tulsa. So the NPSL side will be moving on. I know, I just changed Tend to see a lot of upsets in that third round as well. We'll see what continues here as Lamar Hunt US Open Cup continues, but here's a chance for Villanueva with the right, a deflection, dipping down late in a corner here for Orange County. Villanueva is just 20 years old, but he plays like he's 30 years old. You know, the combination of talent and pace that he brings to this team, it's just something that we have seen um, in, in the last few months, maybe here with uh, Orange County. Here's a good shot. He moves on to the right side. He knows he can win that 1v1 matchup, matchup, but it's important for them to take shots outside the box as well. You mentioned 20 years old at Lancaster, California. Is chance here in the 15th minute for Orange County to get that first score on the board. The service, back post. Great opportunity right there by Chada, and now sent away by Capo FC. So again, this game still going back and forth. Both teams having uh, uh, chances. Neither one able to convert as of yet. I'm at 56 and he's saying it's off. Capo FC in their lone game here in the opening round where they scored four goals in their win over Ventura County Fusion. Meanwhile, the season for Orange County in four games, they've scored five goals on the year. Point of the jersey, some pushing going on there at the post. Always jockeying for position. This ball nodded away and sent back and now cleared out by Granzlo. Not a lot of room to work with for Orange County. Once they have possession, right now it's it's Capo doing a good job defensively. You know, Orange County they need to start moving the ball just a little bit faster and not allowing Capo to set up defensively, just to make things a little bit easier to them. We know already that Capo, you know, they can be dangerous in a counterattack game. So as well, that's something that Orange County needs to be aware of. You go back to the success last year for Capo FC. Just the one loss, 25 points on the season. Southwest Conference champions right now doing their best here against Orange County. And, and when, you, when you come to a competition like this one with that track record, Josh, it's, they know how to win. 
it doesn't matter the level that you're playing. You just have that confidence with you. Samantes will play into the stands. Samantes the captain here tonight for Capo FC. by Richards. Chance maybe once again for Capo on the counter. Threaded ball through. Mota, he's the man you have to watch out for the scoring touch. Mota to left. Great act, Cropper. Cropper with two saves here in this opening half of play. Well, and again, you know, the counter attack, we were just talking about it. It's a good ball through into space. They have some speed at the top, and that's obviously something that will be really important. This time they're able to take the shot on frame, but a good save for the goalkeeper. Montez surveys, now brings it near side. Florida will play back. Both keepers have made saves here in this first half. Two for Cropper, one so far for King. Although he's been active. Chance here on the giveaway for Orange County. Slipped out wide. Loose ball in front. The shot, oh, that one took a deflection. It looked like that was Loya who got his foot to it going to the surface. My goodness, what a play from Loya. It's a bad giveaway to start everything, but you know, good combination. Lucky bounce that time for Nielsen. What a sliding save, look at that. Well, it looks like in the end, it's not Loya. Cervantes but Cervantes. What a great effort defensively that time from Capo. Villanueva, and we'll have oh, a chance here from about 20 yards out for Orange County. Capo FC not happy with that whistle. I think it's a good call, and the frustration from Capo should be that this is the third time already, and we're only into the 20th minute mark, and they're, they're still committing fouls around the box. That's trouble, that's trouble, especially when you don't have a lot of possession. And, and so many players around the ball, you don't have to be that aggressive. Florida and Mota were the players in the area right there, tripping up Villanueva. Now a chance here to try to bend this around as we'll see what happens. Going to wave it to the right of the ball, Peterson to the left. Going to wave it does have one goal on the season. And he'll take it. Well, see, that's one of those tough ones that really at the top of the box, tough angle. Yeah, although I would consider this a missed opportunity for Orange County because, you know, as tough as it is for the for, for, for the player taking the, the free kick, it is even tougher for the goalkeeper because you don't know exactly where the ball could go because you have a good angle on both sides. So I think, you know, if you're Orange County, you want that one back. Well, you look at right now, Capo FC just hurting themselves with fouls, giving Orange County opportunities. As they lose possession, Villanueva will play it out. Dogmen, seeing the length of the field. Cervantes will send it back to King. Pops this one in the air, gets a mistouch on this. Nearly gives it back to Orange County. 
you know, there, there are quite a few things that I like about Capo. You know, or, or it's early in the match and things can change, of course. You know, especially because the, the game is so demanding physically and sometimes that's the case, that's the one point where you struggle when you're facing uh, a USA Championship team if you're a Capo here tonight. But they're staying well organized defensively. They have proven that they can hurt Orange County in the counterattack. And the most important thing, they're playing with a sense of urgency. They're fighting for every single ball. So good signs for Capo early on. Bronzo to the near side. The captain, Cervantes, plays down the line, Loya. This is where you need to take your time if you're a couple. You need to give your defenders a breather. You get a foul in the middle of the field, try to set up something different, maybe go for the long ball or just hold on to possession for a little while. You know, these this are important moments in the match because it keeps Orange County away from your goal. Siegel directs it to the area. So we'll give it back to Orange County as it's sent high into the night. Sun setting in Irvine, California, mm. as we'll have another foul here and another booking, second booking of the game here. Call against Capo FC. And this yeah. will go against Marco Cervantes. Yeah, against the captain. And again, you know, it's uh, at times it's it's just playing with, you know, it comes with pressure. It, it, it comes with what we were just talking about, the sense of urgency. But at times you just get overboard a little bit that's an easy call for the referee and a necessary yellow card at this point Cervantes the second player handed it yellow Javier Loya was the first for Capo FC Fifth minute here in the second round of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup and Championship Soccer Stadium in Irvine, California. Josh Tolan, Jose Rodriguez with you this evening. It feels like five minutes, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's been a good game so yeah, far. It's been a good game. You know, Great pace to it. Absolutely. I, I, I've really enjoyed the first 25 minutes, and I think, you know, that there's more to this game once we get that first goal. It's a great thing about the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup, seeing these different teams like Capo FC take on a team like Orange County. And of course, you'll have MLS teams get involved as well as this cup will continue to develop here as the rounds continue. And we'll see some upsets tonight as well as down the road. It's always the ones that you never expect that make the storyline so great. Or cup sets, Josh. Cup sets, that's a better saying. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm going to steal cup sets from you. And a chance here for Capo FC to have a cup set against Orange County. This one driven from distance, blocked in front, and now cleared away by Montez. It's two clubs separated by 16 miles. Capistrano out of San Juan Capistrano, California, and Orange County out of Irvine. And our third booking. So Sergio Montez now handed a yellow. Well, this, you know, this could be something to think about for the coaching staff, and especially starting the second half. You need to make any substitutions. You already have three players on a yellow. You go a man down, you know, you're in trouble in a game that you can go up to 120 minutes. So, not ideal for Capo. Looking at a couple of those yells, unnecessary as well. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, you know, sometimes you have to manage the game, not only from, you know, the soccer, soccer standpoint, but, you know, in terms of the concentration, in terms of how do you find a, uh, a way to level things up, the emotions and the reality of the game. Nielsen. That's the sidestep defender, gets around. 
Nielsen doing a good job getting around the thinner and Granzo there. And another corner here coming for Orange County. For Orange County, I think they're doing a good job with possession. They, they have to stay patient. Here's the sliding tackle that leads to the yellow card. Second corner here for Orange County. Well, sent towards midfield. <laughs> Siegel knocked off the ball. Who's just handed a yellow card? We'll take this kick. Loya on the end line. Just too heavy of a touch as he wanted to play it across. Plays it back. Montez tripped up from behind. It's good pressure that time from Capo. And they went for the ball. They know exactly when they can pressure, but at times it's just Orange County, you know, just creating a lot of room, moving the ball fast, and that's when they get in trouble. But when they when they do it right and they recover the ball, they'll get opportunities like this one. Siegel hoping to create an opportunity with that right foot to the spot. Siegel from distance. Still in play though. Thirty minutes in possession, pretty equal for both these sides. We had Orange County with one great op opportunity by Osendine, but that hit off the crossbar. He had a two-on-one chance in the opening five minutes for Capo FC that was stopped. Step over and ball bouncing around now sent away. It's going to be important for Capo to close out the first half at this point. You know, I think that they have been able to do a good job in the first, first half hour of the game. Now it's about playing solid defense in the last 15 minutes. You know, take the, the, the half, take half time through, have a conversation. And you know, in the second half, that's where you go for it if you're Capo. But they're off to a good start. Today, one tomorrow, Richmond Kickers taking on Cleveland SC. Bronzo will play it out wide. Cervantes. Your giveaway there. Sprayed out wide. Giveaway by Orange County, sent in by Siegel. Nothing happening for Capo FC. Giveaways there by both sides. Siegel, nice little slip pass through.
talking about cop sets, Josh, it's the 30th minute mark between Sacramento Republic and Crossfire Redman. I'll let you take, take this. Nielsen with an opportunity. Nielsen tries to slip it by and gets through. Nielsen puts Orange County on the scoreboard first in the 33rd minute. Well, a lot of quality, Nielsen. Obviously, great control with the ball here. He positioned himself uh, uh, just over the defender. After a throw in, the header from Villanueva. And look at the counter attack opportunity here. Maybe the first one of the match here for Orange County. Takes his time in front of the goalkeeper. An easy finish for him to the back of the net. It goes a very important goal for Orange County. We were just talking about Capo closing out the first half. They were not able to do it. It's about experience. It's about quality this time for Nielsen. And hitting off the heel there of Nathan King. Emil Nielsen, his first goal here in Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. Second overall here in 2023. But now a little breathing room for Orange County. And now we'll see the response here from Capo FC. Right, and, and now the conversation is a little bit different. You know, we were just talking two minutes ago about they go into the locker room for half and they have a conversation about how can they go for it in the second half. Now it's a little bit different because there's more added pressure to it. You need a goal at least to tie the game and you need a one, basically you need two goals to move on. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a different conversation and it's a, ideal for Orange County to take the lead, especially late in the first half. Yeah, Nielsen, he has an OCDA to the right of him where he could have passed that ball off if he needed to. Ultimately gets the goal and puts Orange County up on the scoreboard first. So crossfire Redmond from NPSO with a 2-0 lead, 32nd minute over Sacramento Republic. Of course, we all know what happened last year with Sacramento Republic. They were able to make it to the final for Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. So that will be the cup set of all cup sets in the second round. Never sleep on any of these teams, that's for sure. And that's the it, beauty of the tournament. We Josh. were talking about this before the game as well, the different lineups that we could possibly see yeah. for each team. Do some of these teams use some of their academy players? Do they go with their normal starting 11? How do you line up? Here's another opportunity. Dogman, though, can't get to the ball as it's cleared away by Capo FC. Chance here from the top of the 18. Another corner coming for Orange County. Well, you know, it's it's not easy after, you know, you play a good half, you give Orange County, County one opportunity in the counter and attack. And, and, you know, what's even more frustrating, especially for the coaching staff, you know, it's it's that the play gets, start, gets started after a throw-in. You, know, you need to have a little bit more control of those situations, especially in the middle. A very important header from Villanueva, but still, you need to play better difference that time. Right footed ball. It's away by Grazo. King mishandles the ball. Peterson. I kept waiting for the whistle to be honest. <laughs> Because, you know, usually the goalkeepers, you know, you sniff around them and it's, it's a foul. This time, plenty of contact, but no call. Back post delivery. Whoop. Misjudged right there, I think, on the pass back. Maybe miscommunication more so than anything. Yeah, this is a better look. And, and you'll see how, as a goalkeeper, you need to be able to adjust, right? Well, you know, it's 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 a cruel position, I, I, I always say, because, you know, you make one mistake or some of your teammates playing defense make a mistake and you pay for it. But this time, you no know, proper is able to recover. 
Nielsen with another opportunity. Nielsen once again at the spot, deflected. Well, Nielsen with an opportunity not only to take the shot, but as well, plenty of teammates. Here's another look. Gets possession once again. Enough time. And Villanueva is in front of him. And Asundina as well on the right side. But he was never able to connect with them, especially in the first situation. You know, second, second, second ball is different because you have more defenders behind. So a missed opportunity at the time. It short. Back heel. An offside flag is up against Orange County. Fans dive deeper into the thrills and drama of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Join the conversation on Twitter and Instagram at Open Cup and on Facebook at Official Open Cup. The one blemish for King on a goal that was scored by Emil Nielsen. And that is where we stand. Hit off King's heel as Nielsen went between the legs. A couple saves by Cropper as well tonight for Orange County. Keeping the clean sheet as of right now. Chad will play it outside. Chance here, dropped off. Oh, just wide, great drop off pass there by Nielsen. But Orange County sending this ball wide by Ocean DA. Man, a beautiful combination in the middle. Ball into space, defenders a little bit late to the ball. The finish is just not there that time. Nielsen does, he does a good job just leaving the ball to his teammate. But unfortunately, you know, that should be the second goal for Orange County. The shot goes wide. Not said much of Matzo's name, who right now is defending the ball for Capo FC. Two goals in that win against Ventura County. He's been pretty quiet. Had one chance earlier that was blocked. The cross. Orange County to the left, knocked away by King. Great look there by Orange County, another corner coming. Yeah, good play on both sides. It's, it's Jameson on the, le on the right side. Gets a good touch initially, he's able to cut it back inside. Takes the left footer shot and a great save that time from Nathan King. Jameson getting a great look with the left foot. Outward swinging ball. And this one knocked away and now poked in, but offside flag up again, once again against Orange County. Well, Orange County really pushing for the second goal here. I think they sense the opportunity. They know if they score the second goal, they, they, they'll be in pretty good shape for the second half. As it stands right now, it's Capo just, you know, trying to survive the, the next five minutes, go to the locker room and try to regroup. I think it's a good call here on the offside. This is not, I think, it, yeah, the header, once he gets, Nielsen gets the header, I think he's off. Siegel turns. Scalzo. Yeah, it was not a good decision from the referee. Initially, he went for the corner kick. He gets help from the assistant referee that time. Now, three minutes left and some change here before we go to the break. Lone goal coming from Neil Nielsen about 10 minutes ago for Orange County. Brazo will play it back. King.
Orange County looking for that second goal here before the break. They've had a couple opportunities, but both ruled against off of offsides. Siegel plays it out wide, gets it on the return. Slip that through the channel and an opportunity here, maybe for Scalzo. Tripped up, good tackle right there by Partita. Villanueva. We've had three yellow cards, and now we'll, we'll get, get a fourth. fourth yep. Sergio Vega now with a yellow card. And now you really have to do something about it. Ask the coaching staff. Man, Villanueva is so talented, so talented. And he can do a lot of things with not a lot of room. That's the perfect example right there. It's one of those fouls you don't need to commit to when you're in That's the... That's true. That's true. Yes, you're absolutely right. No, completely unnecessary that time. You're in Orange County's defensive third, moving the ball up. Plenty of space to work with, plenty of players back. Yep. It's just one of those ones where now you have four players on yellow. Doing wave on Newey, went over the hip there. Fox. Solid opening half for the keeper of Orange County and Cody Cropper. Couple saves in this one to keep the score at 1-0. Looking like Capital FC was going to get the first goal of the game. Villanueva. Jameson looking for Osendine. Get to the break here as they try to find that equalizer before this opening half comes to a close. That could change things too, give them a huge momentum boost if they're able to get something late. Orange County now just looking to go to the break. Nielsen. Oh, Capo FC giving Nielsen and company a great chance here before we head to the locker room on this free kick. Um, two things here. It, it's one more foul for Cervantes, which, you know, should be worrying. And the second one, just a lot of quality from Nielsen, the way he shields the ball, takes the contact. He knows it's coming. Basically creates an opportunity here at a set piece. Peterson, back post ball and a beautiful goal by Orange County to get a two goal lead before the break. <laughs> Little leapfrog to go with it. Bryce Jamison gets the second goal of the game for Orange County. And Nielsen will not get an assist, but he should because he basically created this opportunity here. It's a beautiful cross. It's, it's just beautiful. You just needed to find a player that's willing to risk it all to get the header in it. That player is Jamison. A great finish to the back of the net and in a perfect time because you're just seconds away from the end of the first half. You're two goals up. You're in pretty good shape. Capital FC just being too undisciplined here in the opening half of play. And you look at that, we're about to go to break and you have that late goal, and yep. now the momentum clearly in favor of Orange County. Yeah, I think, you know, that's that's basically, you know, uh, something that everybody was thinking of, and if you're in the capital camp, you were just waiting for the whistle to end the half and go to the locker room. Orange County looking for a third here. You know, I think, especially in the last 10 minutes, the physicality of the game, the counterattack situations in which you were not able to capitalize are playing a factor now. There's tire legs, there's frustration as well, and uh, obviously there's a player in Nielsen that creates opportunities. Tipped away, the 
Scott Foam from the back post. Nearly went in. And what a goal that could have been for Orange County as we'll head to the break. Orange County 2, Capo FC 0. Jose, your thoughts on the first 45? Well, an ideal scenario for Orange County. You know, they, they were supposed to be the better team on the field. They, they had a good performance in the first 45 minutes. They were able to capitalize on opportunities. And, um, you know, they're in pretty good shape. And, and for Capo FC, it's just an opportunity again to compete in the second half. Just think about getting one more goal and maybe you're back in the game. Capo FC was very much the aggressor in the opening 15, 20 minutes or so of play. But then once we got to the 32nd minute, that was when Orange County would get on the scoreboard with a goal from Emil Nielsen. And then a follow up goal in stoppage time here by Bryce Jameson in the 45th minute plus as we would go to half with Orange County up at home against Capo FC. For Capo FC, a chance to gather their breath and regroup as we'll have the second half in a matter of moments and highlights when we return.
45 minutes in the books here between Orange County SC and Capo FC. And his home team up on top, two to zero here in the second round of the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. As we take a look back at the highlights from the opening half between these two teams. And you look at this Capo FC, they were getting aggressive here in the opening half. Yeah, we, we honestly had a, a great start to the game from both sides. Here's an opportunity. It's a beautiful ball through the middle. Mota gets the touch here. It's a good ball looking for Scalzo. Had plenty of time and room to make me maybe make one more move here. He goes for the shot in a missed opportunity at a time. And it's something that we'll be talking about later on in the match. Another opportunity here, Scalzo, edge of the box, makes the right move to create some space moving on to the right side. The shot goes just wide. And at this point, Josh, we were thinking, okay, Capo's here, they're here to compete. But, you know, just a few seconds later, one opportunity on the other side, because Orange County, they had the possession, but early on, they were not able to create as many opportunities. And then it was just a matter of time before Orange County got on the scoreboard first. Yep, it's, it's a great move. It's a veteran move here from Nielsen. It all comes down after a um, throw-in and then the header from Villanueva. But look at how well he positions himself inside the box. And that's the key right there. The finish, yes, obviously, it's important. And just, uh, you know, I think we were like 30 seconds before the end of the half. And a necessary foul again. Set-piece opportunity here. And Jamison with the finish. How do you rate the celebration? Are you like it? <laughs> I enjoyed it. 17 right. year old getting on the scoreboard there for Orange County. And really, you go back to that first half. For Capo FC, they cannot be committing the fouls, giving Orange County these extra opportunities that we saw yeah. in the first half. I think they did a lot of good things, Capo, especially in the first 30 minutes of the first half. They did a lot of good things. But maybe the one thing that we will go back and think twice about is the yellow cards, the fouls. And that was just unfortunate because that's the way Orange County scored the second goal, which at the time, it's a very important one because it gives a lot of breathing room to the home side. So substitutions here at half. And we were talking about this, what we thought Capo FC might do as they look to get on the score sheet here, as they will make a couple subs early on to begin this. Osborne will come in, or excuse me, Herrera will come in for Capo FC as this is played back to Cropper and sent up into the night sky. Also Jenkins in for Capo FC. So Herrera will um, take Marco Cervantes' place. Cervantes is one of the four players with a yellow card. So we talked about this in the first half. And Jenkins is coming in and Vekovic is out of the game. Jenkins got the start in the first round. Didn't say much of Bakovic's name there in that opening 45 minutes of play. So Jenkins looking to jump start. Capo FC and meanwhile for Orange County just bend, don't break. Nothing needs to go wrong for Orange County as they had complete control there from 30 minutes on of that first half. Really, it was just a matter of time before they settled in. And once they did, they were just on fire in terms of how they were passing the ball, very much doing a good job of just con controlling the game, controlling possession. Yeah, I think it was very important for them to just, you know, have the understanding that they were in control. Maybe they didn't have the lead at that point, but they were the better team on the field. And the one thing that they needed to be careful was the counterattack game. And, and they were able to be successful at that. Then they were able to find the first goal and they remain in control of the match. Second round here of the Lamar Hunt US Open Cup from Championship Soccer Stadium in Irvine, California between Orange County. I see, is that one nearly hit the boot right there in Nielsen. He went down to the ground and tried to get that with his right foot. You know, this is the type of performance, if you're Nielsen, that really helps you not only tonight, but gives you a lot of confidence as he moves on in the season. It's a beautiful ball, and, and it's a great read from Nielsen. He's not able to get the touch on the ball, but it's a great read because he knew exactly what he needed to do. He needed to slide to try to get to that ball. 
Neil Nielsen with the first goal, the 29-year-old. Nearly got the touch there. Montez plays it out for Mota. Mota. Good pass in that first half, but otherwise just one shot tamp as this is played across. And now King knocks it away. But another corner once again. Oh, this will be a goal kick. Surely the first 10 to 15 minutes of the second half, they tell you the story of what went on inside the locker room during halftime. And it looks like Orange County, all they talked about was getting that third goal and pretty much sealing the deal and moving on to the next round because they're being, they're being aggressive early on. And that's the right mentality because you don't want to give Capo an opportunity to get back into this game. They only need one goal, honestly, to get back into it because you know then you start playing mind games and then you start to believe that you can actually tie the game if you score the third goal you're out of trouble here's jenkins who subbed on nice little slip ball scowls a little offside First game for Orange County here in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup this year. Furthest they've made is the fourth round. Can't do better than that here this year. Talking about some of those cup sets, hoping to be one of those teams that maybe down the road will upset a team. Capo FC though right now with their work cut out for them as they look for that first goal. They do have one win that came against Ventura County Fusion by a score of four to one. Jamison. Jamison, oh, he wanted that near post, but overran the ball. Man, it's a beautiful setup, a, a great ball. And, and again, Jamison just trying to do something similar to what we saw from Nielsen in the first half. He moves ahead of the defender, but just unable to finish that time for the youngster. Jameson in his second season with Orange County began the Atlanta United Academy. Also part of the Barca residency. They beat last September. Scored his first professional goal back in October. Looping ball for Jameson, headed away. Royal plays it out wide. Montez, you get this out to the channel, the cross, knocked down and into the hands of Cody Cropper. Richards looking for Nielsen as that's deflected out of play there. Peterson diagonal ball. Chance here on the back side of the area. Crossed in, blocked away. Good save right there by Nathan King. King's made a couple of good saves here tonight to keep his team in this. You're absolutely right. You know, that's 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 a save that keeps the hope alive for Capo. That, that's how big it is. And, and, and it comes after, you know, switching sides, but as well, it gets a lucky bounce here. The ball goes all the way to the left and Villanueva is usually able to finish, uh, you know, it's so close in front of goal with the, really a lot of room but you have to give a lot of credit to King for the save that time. King hoping to get some confidence going in his team. The 
Siegel will play this in. Siegel. Chested forward, sent up into the night. Bronzo will bring it down. Boy, it plays it out wide. Nielsen. Has the little roam. Jameson trying to cut that inside as it's sent away by Capo FC. And just plays it outside. Boss played out by Dogman and a chance here for Capo FC in the final third. To look to create an opportunity. See what kind of creativity they can come up with, though. Lardo on the touchline. Brings it back for Capo FC as Nielsen puts pressure on him. Brunzo crosses the equator. a little bit better with possession in the last uh, five minutes or so for Capo. But they have to do a lot better out of the build-up. Jenkins, one of the subs. Ooh, good effort right there by Jenkins to win the ball back for Capo FC. Lardo looks to send it in. Cuts to inside. Just can't relax at this point. You know, if, you're, if you're going to clear the ball away, just make sure you're able to do it in the sense that you're not compromising your team defensively. Scalzo. Got to appreciate the effort right there by Jenkins. Keeping that play alive for Capo FC. Sometimes it's, that's what it takes is that player that comes on as that substitution that has that extra energy that's ready to make a point for their team. Trying to keep their hopes alive here. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, both the left back and the right back are out of the game, the starters. And um, when you're down two goals and you bring new players in those positions, usually that means that they will be more aggressive through the wings. And I think we've seen it with uh, Herrera and Jenkins. Herrera on the right and Jenkins on the left side. They just need to make sure that they're able to put the ball, to put a good service inside the box because it, it doesn't make any sense for them to move, to run up and down the field. And then you're, cre you're not creating opportunities inside the box. Orange County as well, looking for their first win here in 2023. USL champions in 2021. And we'll have a first yellow card handed out, or another yellow card handed out for Capo FC. First here in the second half, given to Parker Scalzo. Discipline is a big part of the game. It's a big, big, big part of the game. And, um, you know, especially in cop comp competition. When you look at Capo FC, 
Looks like we're gonna have our first yellow card handed to Orange County. That's gonna go to Kevin Partida. And it goes the other way as well. It's not it's not only about Capo, but you know, if you're Kevin Partida at, at this point, you know, you're getting an opportunity to play here. If you keep getting yellow cards, at some point you're gonna be missing a game because of yellow card accumulation. So it's completely unnecessary at this point. Mental side of the game just changes so many factors. And tonight that's definitely hurt Capo FC. Orange County looking for a third goal. A little dummy ball left through, but cleared away by Capo. Chato will play it back. Peterson. Jameson, the second goal scorer. Trying to chip this over. Beautiful pass, too, as well to the back post as that one was floating. And Orange County a run to that back post, but ultimately Nathan King going up and grabbing the ball out of the sky. Peterson. Nielsen looking to slip this through. The team's lead goal scorer, Milan Ilowski, will come on for Osendine. Osendine, solid first half, solid really 60 minutes of play here for Orange County. And now you bring on Ilowski, who's already scored two goals on the season, but last year, Jose, he scored 22. It was outstanding in 2022. Just, uh, you know, really unfortunate for Orange County that, you know, collectively as a team, they were not able to perform and they basically missed an opportunity that time. But, you know, um, I think he has the quality to do it again this year. Andrew Fox, who began his career in 2015, will Send this up the field for Orange County. Lonzo sidesteps with one defender. Chata plays it out to the wing. Back to Chata. Just a miscommunication at the time, but the right idea is Jamison should be making that run. But unfortunately at that time he, he decides to stay and wait for the ball outside the box. It was a good ball from Miloski. Jamison, one of three teenagers on this Orange County side. Listen, Dine, one of those teenagers at the age of 19 just subbed off. And then Jamison knocked over from behind. And let's see who this oh, is given to. And it'll be Montez. So this is going to be the second yellow card for Montez, and his night is going to be over. I think. Do they give it to someone else? Montez still on the field. I think it's he's, he's, Jenkins who commits the foul, if I'm not mistaken. So Montez heading off to the far side of the field. There's no complaining from Montes. Second 
So, here's the foul initially. It's a 50-50 ball that time. It's Jenkins who's late. Oh, here we go. There's the explanation that we were looking for. So Montes kicks the ball away. And that's why he gets the second yellow card. Now Eder Olivia into the game. This way, Gallardo off the field for Capo FC. Capo FC playing with 10 men. Looking at this as we approach the 65th minute. Orange County trying to move on to the third round. Scalzo will send it to the other side of the field. Punched away. So the right foot blocks away. Good job there by Vega, switching his right foot, but blocked at the top of the 18 by Orange County. The 2023 Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup continues with more exciting twists and turns over the coming weeks. Tomorrow night, join us here on the BR app or BR Football's YouTube channel at 6.30 p.m. for the third round draw, followed by Richmond Kickers of USL League One hosting Cleveland SC from the NPSL. Now, obviously, a difficult situation here, Josh Ford Capo. Playing a man down, two goals down as well, and um, you know I'm, I think it's 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 safe to say that you know there are some tire legs on the field right now if you're a capo. Plenty of space now for Orange County to work with. The question is, what part of the field do they look to attack in these gaps? As they look for that third goal, three subs for Capo FC, and they do have. Sergio Montez now off the field with the two yellow cards that turn into the red. Just the one sub so far for Orange County. Jameson. Jameson crossing. That ball just rose above two different heads for Orange County. Couple runners there in the area. They're down. It's stretched out there with the cramps. So Sergio Montez, the man that went off the field. Here's his first yellow card. Just a hip check right there. Garner's the first. Yeah, initially the referee played advantage. And, and, and I think of both counts. Good decision on the referee. Now here, Montes kicks the ball away. Is it a little bit harsh? Maybe, you know, because he's already with a, a yellow card. But if you go by the book, then, you know, he made the right decision. And well, the one thing the referee has been consistent with too is if you do a little thing, you're gonna it's get a yellow, yellow card. Yep. Yeah. He wants it's to control yellow. the game. He wants to make sure that there's plenty of rhythm. And as a player, you need to know that. You need to understand who's the official and uh, how he has been able to, you know, gain control of the match is through yellow cards. And you should know that as a player. Diagonal ball. Ronnie Edgorf will come in and off will go Parker Scalzo. 
good start of the match for Scalzo. Just very unfortunate that he wasn't able to finish. Two, it could great, be, two yeah, great looks that he had. Listen, it could be a completely different game if, if he's able to score on one of those two chances. Especially that 2v1 opportunity yeah. that he had, that he hit off the defender and went right into the hands of Cropper. That's one he would like back. If they can just steal one goal, that could change things for them. But with the 10 men on the field, it's going to make it very difficult. Nielsen, a solid game here tonight. Is that ball was looking for a low ski. Villanueva for a low ski. A chance here to make it three, and a low ski does. Oh my goodness, what a finish from Iloski. A lot of quality, we knew it as he stepped on the field. It's a beautiful ball through the middle. And a cold-blooded finish here for Iloski. It's a good ball for Villanueva. Take a look. Just a lot of quality right there. Nice little soft touch, bring it to his right foot, to his left foot. Fan wanted to join in the fun. He's going to be escorted out. Might have got a good selfie, who knows? I doubt it, though. He slipped right before. <laughs> That's the worst part, he slips. Wants to get his 15 minutes of fame and right on the ground. Well, obviously not, you know, unexpected for Orange County to score the third goal. Capo playing a man down, and um, and again, tire legs. I think they they have they have become a factor, not only in the second half, but at least in the last 15 minutes of the first half as well. Lashki now overall with three goals on the season. Mentioned the 22 that he had last year. Mota, quiet game for that man right there with the ball at his feet as he plays it outside. Fox was able to keep that in play for Orange County. Big thing tonight has been corner kicks. Seven for Orange County. Capo FC still looking for their first. Corners. Orange County probably could have had a goal if they weren't offside, too. Mota. No one ahead. will usher this back. Look back at that first half for Cody Cropper. Very active in the opening 20 minutes of play, but other than that, he's been able to settle in. Threaded ball looking for Bryce Jamison as it's slipped back by Jenkins. Second sub for Orange County coming on the field. Kevin Partita is going to head off. Going 
Good game for Partida tonight. Yeah, solid effort in the middle. Providing that consistency. You know, maybe he's not a spectac spectacular play, but he was able to do all the little things right. Thomas Among will come on. Among in his first season with Orange County. Came over after two years with San Diego Loyal as this is drop back. Among another player that can score for Orange County. He had 11 goals in 2022 with San Diego, which was his career high as we'll have another yellow card handed out. Eggdorf, who just subbed in for Capo FC, now handed the yellow. That's really what's done, Capo FC, and just too many mental mistakes this evening. Then you have the double booking. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, you know, there will be positives around the performance. If you look at the first uh, half hour of play, I think there were a lot of good things. But discipline, I think the yellow card situation was something that, you know, really, really was something they, they just couldn't control tonight. Fox from long range, mishandled, but King able to grab the ball. And you know, also the second goal coming out of a set piece late in the first half. I think that's... Right before stoppage time. Yeah, I think that was something that, you know, they, it was really hard for them to handle. You're talking about what it could be going in that locker room up one to zero. And Capo still thinking they're still in the game. Loschke. down for Orange County. There's a player back down for Capo FC as well. 76 minutes, it looks like Orange County will advance to the third round. Go back to 2017 when they made to the fourth round where they fell to LA Galaxy. Orange County fans, we're gonna they're gonna have to wait until tomorrow, right? You know? They get the third round draw, yeah. yeah. 6 30 p.m. It'll be on BR's football YouTube channel as well as the app. Of course, more action at Richmond Kickers of USL League One hosting Cleveland SC from the NPSL. 75th minute between Crossfire Redmond and Sacramento. Still a 2-0 lead for Crossfire, by the way. Here's another look. Well, that's, you know, we talked about this, tired legs. There's no other way to explain that, you know. It's, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a very demanding game. When you play against a USL Championship team, USL Championship, it's a league in which if you want to be successful, you, you have to run up and down the field consistently. And, th and that's what they do. When you face them at this level, sometimes it's just a little bit too much. So Ruiz will come in for Brent Richards. Nielsen will also head off the field, who scored the first goal. Ashton Miles will head on. Bryce Jamison also heading off, so the goal scorer is getting a rest. At least the two goal scorers from the opening half. We'll get a watch the rest of this one from the dugout. 
Well, at this point, Orange County, I think they, it's, it's fair to say that they start thinking about the next game, right? I mean, they're pretty much in control. You give opportunities to young, young players. This is an official competition, so, you know, it comes with pressure to close out the game for the young guys. And, you know, it's a win-win situation at this point for Orange County. So Brian Oloshki also in for Orange County. To tonight's game. Orange County, five goals total on the season, three this evening. Looking for their first win in 2023. Taking down a solid club out of Nisha, Nisa Nation, a team that won eight games last year, just lost one. Southwest Conference champions for Nisa Nation. Just tonight was not their evening. Also, it's not like they were outplayed on the field. It's just they committed those silly fouls to get yes. the bookings that really hurt them. Yeah, and I think, you know, the goals were not exactly the first goal because, you know, at that point I thought in Capo they were still in the game. But that second goal, I think that was just too much. And, um, you know, you have to give credit to Orange County because they, they created opportunities and they did capitalize on them. Capo, unfortunately, they didn't. They had a couple of chances before Orange County had a shot on goal. Service and right into the gut of Nathan King. Brazo will play it near side. Jenkins will go back into the center of the field. Back out to width. Jenkins has Motto to his right, cuts back. Back to the spot. Okay, you see that buildup by Capital FC creating an opportunity right there, but no one in the area able to take advantage of that chance. Mato to his right. You know, you have to put a lot of value into the fact that, you know, Capo is just not giving up. Everything, you know, it's going the other way. This time, Mota with a lucky bounce, takes the shot. There's a deflection, absolutely. We'll have a corner kick. But the effort is still there for the visiting side. And that's what you want to see from any soccer team in the world. You want them to fight every single minute. And now Osborne will head on. First corner of the night, punched up into the sky and over, and Capo C will have another opportunity. It might not change the outcome of the game, but it will be rewarding for Capo to get a goal of this here tonight. Jenkins now will head to the opposite corner after Siegel took it from the near side. Oshke will get his left boot to it. Chipped in ball. Some acrobatics right there from Capo FC. Eighteen games overall this evening. And the Little Mar Hunt US Open Cup, the 108th edition. Game had all the action in the first half for both sides, and then the tides turned at the 32nd minute for Orange County. Looking at the three goal scorers, Emil Nielsen, Bryce Jameson, and then Iloshki coming on as a sub here in the second half. Another foul in a dangerous spot here for Capo FC, and 
We talked about how this has hurt them tremendously. Yeah, and I think, you know, this, this will be a lesson learned, let me tell you. You know, it won't be too long until the coaching staff takes a look at the video and, and shows the players how important it is to be disciplined and not to commit fouls, exactly like this one, which we have seen maybe six or seven times in the game. That's too much. Peterson. Little way of a nods down, but sent the other direction by Capo FC. And this will be a card here for Orange County. Shout out, we'll get the yellow card. And it's a good decision on the referee because we saw in the first half similar situation go the other way and it ended up in a yellow card. So give a lot of credit to the referee. You want to keep that balance throughout the full 90 and he has been able to do that. No doubt about that one, no argument. Chance of getting the yellow card in the 84th minute. Siegel. Mishandled. Stabbed away by Orange County. And then we'll have the trip up. And <laughs> well, definitely a bulky night here for both these sides. Again, no argument on that one as the heels were clipped. Yeah, it was a counter-attack opportunity this time for Orange County. Clear foul right there by Oliva, who just subbed on moments ago. <laughs> Oliva was, would say that's tactical. <laughs> but that one I can understand more than some of the ones that they had earlier. Yeah. Which is clearly a yellow card, <laughs> yes. but it's understandable, right? <laughs> Capo FC here got to the second round with a win over Ventura County Fusion by a score of four to one. Still hoping to get that first goal. Meanwhile, Orange County looking for their first clean sheet. There you have the collision. And it's a good no call from the referee because the contact is between two teammates. We see it all over the world, how referees are quick to the whistle once the goalkeeper goes down. So, you know, it's not an easy play. Orange County looking to hold on for the next five minutes or so as looking to advance to the third round. Again, you can watch the draw tomorrow night on the BR app or BR Football's YouTube channel at 6.30 p.m. One game tomorrow with the Richmond Kickers taking on Cleveland SC. Nothing like some Thursday night football. This ball played out wide. Looped over the top and a chance here maybe for a fourth goal. And this is gonna be put through and Orange County has four on the scoreboard. Thomas Among, one of the subs, gets the second goal here in the second half for Orange County. Just a power move from Among. It's just, you know, he doesn't need a lot of room and he's quite a player when it comes to the open space. It's a good ball here behind the center backs. Look at that first touch. Positions himself in front of goal. And after that, it's an easy finish for him to the back of the net. If we had any doubt, it's all over here. First half, it was all about the starters getting the goal. Second half, it's been all subs. Milan Lashki and now Thomas Mon with the fourth goal. Here coming in the 87th minute. Talked about him having 11 goals with San Diego Loyal last year. Hoping to come over to Orange County and be that second option maybe behind Olashki for this Orange County club to produce goals. But you look at Bryce Jamison, he had opportunities yep. converting on one of those there in the opening half. 
Well, let me tell you, if he's able to do that consistently, he's going to get a lot of minutes. And he's going to fight consistently for a starting spot in this team because there's a lot of quality in that play. It's not an easy ball to control. He was able to do that. And then just to finish in front of the goalkeeper, he did it, you know, like, you know, the top strikers in the world. It's, it's a lot of quality in that play. You also look at Osadine. Earlier in that first half, he had a chance for a goal, hit it off the crossbar. Orange County showing that they have weapons and if they can be productive in the next round. This will be headed back, but they'll look to hopefully for the second time in their club's history, get into that fourth round. That's their goal as obviously all these teams to continue to march on. Siegel. Jenkins heads it in. Oh, and there you just see the trip over the feet. Nothing going Capo's way. Osborne just falling over his own shoelaces. Couldn't stay upright. It's so, okay, it's 4-0. But to be fair, in the first 30 minutes of the game, it was hard to believe the game will end up 4-0. You can make the argument, well, you go down, man, in the second half. No one saw that, well, yeah. I guess, with the amount of yellow cards. But yeah, they were very much competing with Orange County, and then yeah. just one too many mistakes is what unraveled for Capo FC, and the tides really changed for Orange County. They would have got maybe that first goal on that 2v1 or the other opportunity oh, yeah. by Scalzo. That changes the Who game. Who knows where this game goes? Yeah, yeah, that changes the game completely. Putting pressure on Orange County. You look at those missed chances in Orange County taking advantage of their opportunities. You also look at King in those opening 30 minutes of play. He made a couple of good saves right. against Orange County as well. He very much kept his team alive. I think Orange County, they just, they, they just, they just have been effective in front of goal. They've had, they haven't had a lot of chances. They did put two goals in the back of the net that were called off by offside. But whenever they had a clear chance in front of goal, they did score. Meanwhile, on the other side between the sticks, Cody Cropper looking for his first clean sheet. And we're gonna have a chance for a fifth goal here for Orange County, as this will be headed to the spot on the penalty. And there was no doubt from the referee. He went straight away for the penalty. We have the benefit of the replay and I think it's a good call that time. Once again, good night for the referee. Among the player that went down for Orange County. Let's see who steps up and be Brian Oloshki among still on the surface. Brian Oloshki holding on to the ball. off under his own power, so that's good to see. Long scoring the fourth goal. A chance here in stoppage time for the spot. But Brian Oloshki, possibly to give Orange County the fifth goal. He's going to hand the ball off, and it's going to go to Milan Oloshki. So he's looking for a brace. King jumping around, we'll wait. 
Former UCLA Bruins steps up. The stutter, and he slots it through the right corner. He needs to finish for Elashki. His second goal of the match. Just a few minutes on the field. Here's the foul from Herrera. It's a good call from the referee. And there it is. A little bunny hop right there, and King just frozen. Elashki with a brace. Orange County gets the win, five to zero over Capo FC. Jose, your thoughts? Well, you know, I think it's 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 a good performance from Orange County. The five goals, I think it might be too much. Capo, I think they put up a fight, especially in in the first half. But you know, that's how it goes in the cup. If you miss opportunities, then you know the bigger team they will make you pay for it. The bigger team did make Capo FC pay for it tonight. You, you go back to the first half. Two goals, second 45 minutes, three goals all by the subs. And Orange County looking to build this momentum into that third round to draw again tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. We'll have that on the BR app as well as BR's football team, football's YouTube channel. And you look at this game, how much confidence does Orange County now have? Well, it, it gives a lot of confidence, especially because, you know, early on, you needed to be almost perfect to not allow the Capo to get a lead. And, and this is where we get the first goal of the match. A very important moment, of course. A good run by Nielsen. This comes after a throw-in, moves past the defender, and then the easy finish in front of goal. That's one of the key moments of the match. But I think, you know, the, the one moment that really set the tone for the rest of the night came right here. Nielsen controls the ball, positions himself in front of the center back, Gets the foul called, and here a beautiful ball in, and the header from Jamison. 2-0, just a few seconds away from the end of the first half. And confidence was in favor of Orange County, even though Capo FC was very much in this game. Yeah, well, this is another very important moment in the first half because this is where Montes gets his first yellow card, then kicks the ball away. Unbelievable. The little things in the game are so important. Montes kicks the ball away, gets the second yellow, off he goes with the red, and the game changes completely. Capo FC playing a man down for 25 minutes, and then Milan Elashki coming off the bench, getting his first goal. Well, that's trouble, because you go a man down, and then Elashki comes on. I mean, the scenario was not ideal for Capo. So, you know, it, it was about defending with the ball. Orange County, they were able to do it, and they had a lot of quality coming off the bench as well. A man with the beautiful finish here, but I'll, I'll take that first touch, man. Orange, Just outstanding. Orange County taking advantage of their opportunities and delivering when it counted. Yeah. And then you have the penalty there committed by Capo. Last play of the game. It's a goal from Miloski. And, uh, you know, at this point, obviously, Orange County pretty much in control of the game. And moving on to the next round with a commanding lead. And now we'll take a look at some of the scores here from the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. We'll go back to yesterday. Miami FC over Jacksonville Armada by a score of 3-1. to one. Flower City Union over Manhattan SC by a score of 3-1. to one. Then you look at New Mexico United in the USL taking down UDA Soccer by a score of 6-0. to nil. Plenty of action. And like we said, we're looking forward to more upsets coming cup as well. Sits, yes. Cup sets, cup, cup sets, sets, cup yes. sets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, there's there's a lot going on, but you know, if we talk about cup sets, I think we need to point out to Union Omaha 2-0 lead over El Paso Locomotive and South Georgia Tormenta 2-1 over RGV as well. So again, you're looking at 18 matches tonight, two of them looking like upsets here. And then as we advance to the third round, probably see some more. And then, of course, tomorrow night, you have Richmond Kickers of USL League One hosting Cleveland SC from the NPSL. Great action tomorrow. The Lamar Hunt US Open Cup continues here in this second round of play. But Orange County with a dominant performance here from 30 minutes on. Capo FC, they had their chances, just unable to convert. What a game for Orange County as they get their first win overall here in 2023 as they drop five goals, which matches their season total tonight for this crew. 
I'm Josh Toll for Jose Rodriguez saying thank you for tuning in as Orange County SC gets a win tonight, 5-0 over Capo FC.